Hi guys, Lawrence Yeager here with my first video ever. It's gonna be more of a walkthrough than a tutorial. That being said, let's jump right in. First thing I did was head over to 3dscans.com, hit that download button, and then import it right into Blender. The downloaded scan is quite dense, so to use it in a rigid body system, we first need to reduce the mesh. But before I did that, I duplicated the mesh, and then I parented it to the original and then I hit it. I'll be using the high res mesh later for the render. Next, I went over to the modifiers tab and added a remesh modifier. I set the mode to smooth, checked the smooth shading option and set the octree depth to 7. Now we have something a bit more manageable for our rigid body system. Let's apply the modifier and move on. I placed the head where I wanted it and added a cube and scaled it. With the cube selected, I went over to the physics tab and added a rigid body to the cube, set it to passive, changed the shape to box. With the head selected, I added another rigid body and left all the settings to their default values. When you hit play, the head should fall down into the cube, bounce around and settle. What we want to do now is fake the behavior of the head as it hits the liquid. We can do this by adding force fields. I added a drag and a turbulence force field. The drag will slow the head down and the turbulence will add that swaying movement as it falls through the water. Here are the two force fields, there's my turbulence, and there's the drag force field. You can change the display of them in the empty options. I animated the drag force field in the Z position as the head falls down, slowing it down as it moves towards the cube. I set the linear value to 2 and the noise to 3. For the turbulence force field, I animated the strength from 0 to about 350 and then all the way from 350 back down to 0. And by animating the strength, we can essentially turn on that force field when we need the head to sway as it falls through the water and then turn it off, allowing the head to settle. Let's head over to our Scenes tab, and under Rigid Body Cache, hit that Bake button. Baking applies a simulation, so that you can play back in the viewport without it having to calculate every time. Just remember, that if you want to make changes, you'll have to free the bake, make the changes, and then bake again. Now when you hit play, you can see it play back beautifully in the viewport. Now let's move on to those flip settings. With the head selected, head over to the Physics tab and click on Flip Fluid and change its type to Obstacle. Make sure to check Export Animated Mesh as our mesh is animated. Add two cubes with Flip Fluid properties as well, one for the domain and one for the fluid object. Make sure the flip object and the obstacle, which is our head, are inside of the domain. You can leave the flip object settings to their default values. Let's look at the domain settings now. In the Flip Fluid Simulation drop-down, I set my grid resolution to 300. We can ignore the Flip Fluid Cache for now. We can also ignore the Flip Fluid Display settings for now. In the Flip Fluid Surface drop-down, I have a subdivision of 2, and my repeat of my smoothing is also on 2. These are the settings of the Flip Fluid White Water. I'll just move them here so you can see them all. These are the values that I've changed. This value I set to 30 million. I learned that I only needed about 1 or 2% of those particles for the final simulation. So this value could have been set to 0.6, but I had it set at 30. So that's a lot of particles that were simulated that I didn't end up using, so you can leave it at 0.6. I didn't change anything in the Flip Fluid World settings, nothing in the presets, the Flip Fluid Advanced Settings, I set my Min Sub Steps to 4, Particle Jitter to 0.25, and all the other settings were left to their default values. If you head over to the Debug Settings and you click on Display Grid, you can really see how dense that grid is. It's going to take a while to simulate this, but the result is absolutely gorgeous. Once you've gone through all those settings, you can hit that Bake button. So sit back and relax. 
This took about 17 hours to simulate on my computer and this is the result. To smooth out that fluid surface, select it and head over to your modifiers tab. Add a corrector smooth modifier, set the factor to 1.5, the repeat to 10 and select only smooth. In part 2 we'll be going over the lighting, the materials and the rendering settings. If you have any questions, please comment below or message me on Twitter. Thanks so much guys and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!